Good morning. There I am. Good morning, everybody. Okay, let's start that again. I got the first row. Good morning, everybody. Oh, that was so much better. Okay, so I have a confession to you guys this morning. Well, it's not really a confession. It's a a guess what kind of situation. Normally, we record the first service to go out on the internet for people to watch. Well, something happened with the recording, so you guys get to be on the recording today. (laughs) So that means you have to sing loud and proud because, uh, as you can tell, Rick is not here. He is working the Trace Diaz weekend this weekend. And this is just a disclaimer. These songs that we picked today uh, were based around Kurt Buck's voice. Kurt Buck called us this morning sick. So Amber is so much prettier, but she does not have the deep voice that Kurt has. (laughs) So we're going to do our best to hit those notes that would have been made just for Kurt. So let's all stand and worship God together, please. Father God, we come into your presence this morning to worship you, to honor you. And Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are gathered here today. We have the privilege of worshiping you together, and I thank you. I pray your blessings now as we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have seat kids down front, please. You guys can. You, <laughs> all right. John, you come. Oh, you're not a kid. I thought you were a kid, John. <laughs> all right. All right. Hi, beautiful. All right. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Good morning. Get your hands out of your pockets. (laughs) Aaron is too. (laughs) These two guys are Joe Cool. We're too cool for that. All right. This is just for you. What is this? A cane. A cane? cane. Well, 
it'd only be a cane for John Lester, right, John? <laughs> what is it? What else is it besides a cane for a big guy? Hmm. Yes. For an old <laughs> look right here. What is that right there? What's that yellow thing? <laughs> He's trying to tell you. What kind of animals are these? Sheep. Sheep. And this is it's called a <laughs> This is called a staff, okay? And a shepherd has a staff. Now, what is a shepherd? If a sheep, don't move. If a, I said, I said don't move. If a sheep starts going in, If a, if a sheep, no, no. If a sheep starts going in the wrong direction, if a sheep starts going in the wrong direction, the shepherd can say, come here, come here, come here, okay? Or, or, if a wild animal comes to eat the sheep, exactly. What can the shepherd use this for? To kill the wild animal. To hit a home run. To hit the wild animal to protect the sheep. Now, does God do that with us? No. Does God sometimes move us from here to here? Does God sometimes tell us to go somewhere and do something? And sometimes God just needs to protect. So God has a staff, okay? No, like a shepherd's staff. All right, all right, you guys ready to go upstairs? If you don't go upstairs, you have to sit right here by me the whole service. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, now you can go. Now, now you can go. Oh, the big ones are too cool for school today. Mom, I'm just trying to get my headband in. <laughs> okay, go, go. <clears throat> Couple of announcements. Uh, collection plate up in front, one in the back to my right. Also, uh, Jackson Nolan, uh, sophomore at Wrights High School yesterday, won the cross country regionals. <laughs> Three point something miles. I told his dad, I said, you know, you buy him a car, you wouldn't have to run all over the place. <laughs> uh, we are having a blood drive. Vicki Wilson. There you are, Vic. We're ha uh, you or me. Uh, a week from tomorrow, we're having a blood drive here. You can see Vicki and get signed up. <clears throat> Church chicks are putting on a Christmas bazaar. Uh, that is Sunday, November the 6th. And I think there are tickets in the back following the service. Uh, in the back to the right, you can purchase a ticket for the bazaar. I don't know much about it other than they're having fried chicken, so I will be there. 
if you ordered a shirt, the shirts are in, and they're back in the back. You can pick up a shirt following the service. Are there extra shirts? Mm -mm. Nope. But we could probably put a second order in, but we just have to be... Okay. Uh, Operation Christmas Child. <clears throat> uh, we have several boxes turned in already. Operation Christmas Child. Uh, that is in the back to my left uh, for Operation Christmas Child. Christy Green and Diana Effinger are in charge of that. Trunk or treat, we got a lot of announcements. But you know what I thought about that? At first, I'm like, I don't want those many announcements. <clears throat> and then I thought, you know what? That means we got a lot going on. That means we got people doing things. Uh, praise God for that. Uh, trunk or treat. In two weeks, uh, October 30th, out in the parking lot from 2 to 4, you decorate your trunk and give out candy to me and the kids as we come around. <laughs> That's what my note says. Today, uh, fritter getter lunch. I apologize. <coughs> A fritter getter lunch today. Um, uh, the group that uh, kind of in charge of the um, fall festival booth are having a fritter getter lunch. Anybody that helped out or anybody that just wants a free meal, uh, following this service, <laughs> going next door, and just an appreciation lunch. <coughs> Lori. We do that anonymously. Uh, only Lori and uh, maybe one other person knows who is receiving a Thanksgiving food basket. But if you know people in need, please fill out an application and let us know. Any other announcements this morning? All right, Robert Franz, if today's your birthday, would you stand up, please? <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday to Robert Franz. I'm not as good as Rick. I don't have something fun to say. <laughs> happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right, let's meet and greet. the circle be unbroken by and by Lord by and by there's a better home awaiting in the sky Lord in the sky will the circle be unbroken by and by Lord by and by there's a better
have a seat. <laughs> First of all, I want us to keep in prayer this morning. Rick and Mike Lancaster and Aaron Taylor, they are all working on the Men's Tracyus Weekend. And I just want to lift them up as they are serving uh, gentlemen going through the weekend and hoping to get more... Um, we want them to get rest, and we want them to be ready to come back to be leaders within their churches. So we just want to keep them in our prayers and lift them up. I also, I mentioned, Kurt was supposed to be with us this morning. Uh, Kurt called this morning and said he's sick. So it was kind of like, okay, plan B. We'll just have to sing low, which is where you all come in <laughs> singing loud. And I also want us to keep Trina in our prayers. Trina had back surgery this week. She's doing great. Uh, she was actually going to try to come and sing this morning, but... Yesterday was a bit of a rough day, so I would like us to uh, keep them in prayer as well this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for bringing us together. Lord, like Jean said in announcements, we have so many things going on. Lord, I thank you for the servant hearts that are in this church family. Lord, I thank you that we reach outside of ourselves, that we look to help serve our brothers and sisters, whether it's on a Tracedius weekend, whether it's for food baskets, whether it's working down at the fritter booth so that we can put money back into our community for the Christmas bazaar that's coming up, Lord, that we're able to reach out and give funds to our nonprofits in, the, in town. Lord, I just thank you for all of those servant hearts. I thank you for the promises that come along with all of that. Lord, um, I thank you that someday we will have an unclouded day to be able to worship you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this next song... It has been a long time since we've done it in church. And you're going you're gonna to think Willie Nelson when we do it, so don't be expecting too much. But you're going to think it because we're going to do Unclouded Day. This is definitely one that would have been a great Kurt Buck voice because it's really low. So you all going to have to sing loud. Wow. 
are doing a great job. <laughs> That's one of those songs that it's easy either to play or to sing. It's not easy to do both. <laughs> so I thank you all for joining in worship and helping on these this morning. You guys are doing a great job. And thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you do tell us and reassure us that your grace is enough. for leading us in worship today. Thank you. <clears throat> we go to God in prayer. Susie mentioned Trina. Uh, Trina Buck had surgery this week. I ask your prayers for Trina. Kurt is home ill. Uh, please pray for, pray for both of them. Uh, <laughs> Becky Carnahan is having some health situations. Uh, please keep Becky in your prayers. 
Continue to keep Brian Hostetler in your prayers. Uh, he started treatment, and we're just going to trust God. Um, Christy Green is not with us. Uh, I'm looking. Yeah, Christy is not with us today. Um, as most of you know, Christy has an inoperable uh, brain tumor, and she's been doing really well with chemo and radiation. Uh, Friday evening, yesterday, we've been texting back and forth, and her numbers are not good, uh, which that is a uh, situation that has happened before with everything she's going through, and her doctor has told her she needs to stay home and stay away from people, uh, so that's what she's doing, but please keep Christy in your prayers. Uh, <clears throat> One of my friends from high school, we've, uh, we've played together on the football team, Kurt Hayden. Uh, Kurt is uh, in a hospital in Indianapolis with a heart situation. I ask your prayers for Kurt. Uh, Dontel, uh, Dontel's youngest brother passed away. Funeral is Tuesday, correct? Uh, I certainly ask that you lift up Dontel and his family uh, during this time. If you have prayer concerns, if you'll lift them up. <clears throat> Thank you. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, as we come before you this morning, Father, first of all, we thank you. Father God, we thank you. We acknowledge that you are the Lord God, the creator of the ends of the earth. We acknowledge that you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die upon the cross for us. We acknowledge that your grace, your gift of your son Jesus is enough. And Father God, we come before you today. There are those in our midst that are dealing with the loss of a loved one. Father God, I pray you wrap your loving arms around them. In their grief and in their sorrow, I pray that they experience you in a way they've never experienced you before. Father, for those that are dealing with health issues, Father, I pray that Jesus himself would reach out and touch and that they would be healed, healed in the name of Jesus. Father, for those that are simply going through a difficult time, oh, Father God, I pray. I pray that they, that they look to you. I pray that they experience you. Whether it's in a miraculous, powerful way or in your still, small voice, I pray that they experience you. Father God, we thank you. Father, I thank you. For my brothers and sisters that are here, I, I thank you, Father, that we have the privilege of journeying together in this life of, of faith. Oh, Father, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name. I'm going to begin this morning by reading a story. Uh, <clears throat> it's a story I came across in doing some research for today. And I'm going to read it word for word <clears throat> so that I don't mess this up. Uh, at one point in this story, it might seem a little rough, uh, but just hang, hang with me, hang with me. The old farmer claimed that he could command his mule with nothing more than a few soft-spoken words, no whips necessary. She would respond, he claimed, with nothing more than gently spoken commands. So his buddy down at the feed store asked for a demonstration. Prove to me that your old mule 
will respond with nothing more than gentle language. <clears throat> Out in the field they went, the farmer, his buddy, and the mule. As the friend watched, first in awe and then in horror, the farmer took a huge piece of lumber, a two-by-four, about eight feet long, and he swung it with all of his might, hitting the mule upside the head. When the mule stopped braying and bellowing and prancing around, the farmer then said quietly, Come here, and the mule came. Sit, and the whimpering creature sat. Back up, and she backed into the harness of a waiting plow and waited calmly for him to hook up. You see, she'll respond to a simple voice command. But his friend objected. What are you talking about? You said all you had to do was talk to her, but you hit her with that too before. What do you mean you just command her with words? That's not what I saw. Oh, that, said the farmer. Well, first, I do have to get her attention. <clears throat> what does it take? For God to get our attention. What does it take for God to get our attention? I want to start off by reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 22, starting with verse 22. What does it take for God to get our attention? Numbers 22, 22. But God was angry. Because he is talking about Balaam. But God was angry because he was going. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. Now he was riding on his donkey and his two servants were with him. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, the donkey turned off from the way and went into the field. But Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back into the way. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path of the vineyards with a wall on this side and a wall on that side. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pressed herself to the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. <clears throat> the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn to the right hand or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. So Balaam was angry and struck the donkey with his stick. And the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. And she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? If your donkey talked to you, would that get your attention? Balaam was trying to do something that God did not want him to do. And so as Balaam was on his way riding his donkey, the angel of the Lord appeared, and the angel of the Lord was going to stop Balaam. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord, but Balaam did not. Balaam was so focused where he was going, what he had to do, even though God had told him, don't go, Balaam was like, I have to go, I have to go, I have to go. And he was so focused, he did not even see the angel of the Lord. But the donkey did. The donkey did. 
And the donkey was like, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do that. The donkey was like, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to go over here. And Balaam was so mad at his donkey, he thumped that donkey three times. God had to have the donkey speak in order to get Balaam's attention. What does it take for God to get our attention? Sometimes we're so busy, we're going here, we're doing this, we got this to take care of. <clears throat> Susie and I were talking about our schedule for today, and it was just kind of like we got this, we got this, we got this, we got that, and we got to go here, and we got to do this. And it was just like, <laughs> time out. Where's God in all of it? Where's God in all of that? Where's worship in all of that? Including two services and Susie leading music. and <clears throat> Sometimes we can even be doing God's work and forget God. Balaam was on a mission. God told him, don't go. And Balaam was like, I got to do this. He had the donkey speak to him. That was unusual, I would assume. I mean, I don't know how many talking donkeys you've ever been around, but boy, if my donkey, well, I don't have a donkey, but if I did, if my donkey started talking to me, it'd get my attention. God got his attention. This past week, every, every week I speak to our preschool kids. We have 80 kids in our preschool. And every Wednesday morning, they come in in three different groups, and they're up here in the front pew pews. And this week, this last week, I talked to the kids uh, about Moses and his staff. And I pointed out the picture, and I came over here, and I said, look, there it is right there. And they said, well, how come yours isn't yellow, like in the, <laughs> like in the stained glass window? I said, because mine's old. <laughs> Remember the story of Moses? How did God get Moses' attention? The burning bush. Moses had been taking care of sheep for 40 years. I don't know if God had spoken to him Earlier, I, I don't think he did, but we, we, we don't really know. But for 40 years, Moses was taking care of the sheep. Normally, whose job was it to take care of the sheep? Low man on the totem pole. Taking care of the, you know, when I was a kid, you know, when you started working, you know, you, you worked at a burger joint or whatever, that, that was the kind of job you, you got until you got a better job, right? Taking care of the sheep, that, that was low man on the totem pole. Moses did it for 40 years. And to make it even worse, who did he work for? His father-in-law. If I had to work for my father-in-law. Oh, he's here this morning. Ooh, sorry about that. He took care of sheep for 40 years. And how did God get his attention? He got a bush, set it on fire. So here's Moses out in the desert taking care of his father-in-law's sheep, protecting them from wild animals, making sure they're fed and watered. Moses is out there twiddling his thumbs, and all of a sudden... He sees this bush on fire. And he's like, huh, wonder how that happened. Smokey the bear won't be happy. A few minutes later, he looked over there and that bush was still burning. And Moses is thinking, what in the world's going on? Still burning. Moses is like, this is weird. 
still burning. Finally, hard-headed Moses like, I better go check that out. God got his attention. Forget the sheep for a minute. They'll be fine. Look. And when Moses, when God finally got Moses' attention, God said, Moses, I have something for you to do. What does it take for God to get our attention? What does it take? Susie mentioned Rick and, and Mike and Aaron are working at Trace Diaz weekend, and you've heard me talk about Trace Diaz, the walk to Emmaus, Curcio, Chrysalis, Journey, Kairos Inside, Kairos. What is all of that? <laughs> well, stop and think about it. For three days, you stop everything else that you're doing. And for three days, just go check out the burning bush. For three days, God talks to you through a donkey, through whatever. For three days, you get to just, just listen. You slow down enough that you actually have a chance to hear God speaking. Genesis chapter 9. What did God put in the sky? A rainbow. Why? So that every time people saw a rainbow, they could go, oh, look, a rainbow. That's pretty. No. According to Genesis 9, why did God put the rainbow in the sky? So that every time people saw the rainbow, they would be they would be reminded of God's covenant, God's promise. God said, I will never destroy the earth by flood again. And every time you see that rainbow, you'll be reminded of my promise. God, God is putting signs out there to help us. What does it take for God to get our attention? I mentioned Christy Green and her inoperable brain tumor. And Christy has been very open about this. She's been very open about this. Christy, she's married and had two kids. She had a career working at Gateway. Life was good. <clears throat> she came to church when they wanted to. They came to church when it worked out in their schedule. She was not anti-God, but it was not a priority. Until that day when she was at work at Gateway Hospital taking care of a patient. And the next thing she knows, she's being rushed to the emergency room. And that doctor came in and said, you have an inoperable brain tumor. We don't know how much longer you have to live. God got her attention. God got her attention. What does God have to do to get our attention? Let me read from Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood through what he what through what has been made so that they are without excuse god doesn't try to hide himself from us i i see god at work 
all the time. Yesterday, I got a text, text, text message from someone, someone who is actively involved in helping other people. And the text message said, I've got an adult male who is living in a, a treatment center, residential housing. He has nothing, but he's got a job. The city bus system, the closest they can get him to his job is three and a half miles. So he can ride a bus to get to work, but then he has to walk three and a half miles to get to work and then th walk three and a half miles back. By chance, do you have a bicycle? I said, let me check. We do have something called a rummage sale here twice a year, right? And we just had one where we got rid of everything, right? We just had that. So this morning, I said, Pappy, by chance, do we have a bicycle? He said, let me go check. <laughs> Two minutes later, he's wheeling a bicycle out. I see God at work all the time. It's clearly evident. Hebrews chapter 2. I want to read the first four verses. For this reason we must pay much closer attention. Anybody ever said that to you? We must pay much closer attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away from it. For if the word spoken through angels proved unalterable, and every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty, how will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? After it was at the first spoken through the Lord, it was confirmed to us by those who heard. God also testifying with them, both by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. What does it take for God to get our attention? As I was preparing for this today, I, I was... I was thinking about my own life, and I, I asked myself, okay, when did God get my attention? I don't know that I have a specific situation that I just truly felt like God got my attention. Uh, certainly when I was 16, my life took a dramatic turn. Uh, I don't know that there was anything specific that just, I didn't have a talking donkey, I, I, I didn't have a burning bush. But certainly, from the time that I accepted Christ as a sophomore in high school, there have been times when, when God has, has spoken to me, given me direction, told me yes or no or but I don't, I, I, I haven't had, I, I don't know if you all have had a burning bush experience. I don't know. What I do know is this. God will do whatever it takes for his people. If that means a burning bush, if that means a talking donkey, if that means a brain tumor uh, I don't know, God's going to do whatever it takes for his people. As I was thinking about this this morning, I thought, is there any kind of a universal talking donkey that God has given to us to get our attention? Last Sunday afternoon, Jack Young is sitting here, and Jack 
lives in our neighborhood. Susie and I have allowed uh, the Youngs to live in our neighborhood. Uh, Jack and two other gentlemen were going to make crosses. And Jack invited me over to watch. And this is one of the crosses that they made. And Jack, uh, they invited me to participate in the process. And uh, Jack, Jack was so good to say, you know, you can tell people you made these. No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. But this is a cross that they made. They take four nails, and they cut them off, and they weld them together. And then they take them and put them on a grinder, and then they, they polish them up, and they put a lanyard on it. I couldn't even figure out how to tie the lanyard. <laughs> but this is our burning bush. This is our talking donkey. The cross is one way, the way that God gets our attention. That God says to us, look, look, this is what I've done for you. This is what I've done for you. cross is our burning bush. <laughs> as unbelievable as it would be to hear a donkey talking. I remember when I was a kid that silly, stupid TV show, Mr. Ed, the talking <laughs> horse. And I, could, I only watched it a couple of times and I remember thinking, that is so stupid. I, <laughs> the cross, that's real. That's real. That's God getting our attention, saying this, this is what I've done for you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the cross. Father, I thank you. That we still have the cross. I thank you, Father, that your son Jesus died upon that cross. And that he was resurrected three days later. Father, I thank you. For the cross. Father, it gets my attention. Father, I see the cross in nature. I see the cross in your universe. And Father, I thank you for our burning bush, our talking donkey. I thank you, Father, for the cross. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand.